Welcome back to Refit and Sale. My name's George Easter, the Silent Boat Butler, and this is what is quickly turning into the best Contessa 32 engine swap YouTube channel in the world. For the keen-eyed followers on YouTube, no, this is not Lottie. You are absolutely right. This is yet another Contessa 32, one of about three I'm doing engine work on this winter. So this actually used to be my own boat. It's a particularly nice example, but it's got a somewhat aging Yanmar 2GM. It's actually still in pretty good condition, but the owner has decided to give it a little bit of a Christmas present and she's getting a brand new Beta 25, which is turning up in about two to three weeks. So I need to get cracking on preparing the boat for that new engine. Keep watching and I'll show you how I do it. For the Contessa fans out there, I'm going to give you a quick sweep around the main cabin because this is a lovely, lovely example of a Contessa 32. Beautifully kept, beautifully maintained, and uh, you can see all the woodwork is pretty lovely. Very nice floor. And there is, sorry about the sunlight, and there is the beast that is coming out. So it's another Yanmar 2GM two-cylinder diesel engine and uh, I'm going to have to start unplumbing that shortly. But before I do anything else, I'm going to get some plywood and uh, just put something down, uh, maybe cardboard or plywood, on the floor there just to protect it. Um, and then I can start disconnecting everything. So I've got obviously power connections to remove from uh, to and from the battery. I've got water connections, diesel connections, uh, and then I'm hoping I can start unbolting things and slide it forward. And then tomorrow, with a bit of luck, I'll be able to persuade the yard to um, come and hoik it out and stick it in my van. And just like that, the engine is out. So I've got it sitting on a block of wood, which is sitting on cardboard, just to make sure I don't damage the floor. I'm just needing to arrange for a man with a crane to come along and we'll hike it out and uh, stick it in the back of the van. With the engine now out, I'm going to start cracking on with doing some work in the engine bay here. The first thing I need to do is to give it a really good clean because um, as much as I wear coveralls and stuff, I don't really want to go into this 
what is actually a relatively clean engine bay um, with my nice new jacket on, uh, all my clean clothes. So um, I need to mop up the water, the diesel, the coolant that's in the bottom there. And that was just dropped when I removed the engine. Uh, then uh, I can start removing the old cables, the old battery cables, some of the old plumbing um, and pull all that out. Uh, the plan for this engine bay is that I'm not going to be replacing all the sound insulation. Most of it's in pretty good condition. I put this sound insulation in, I'm going to say probably 10 years ago, and it is fair pretty well. I've got some new lights to go in there. Uh, so we're going to have some down lighting in the engine bay just to make it easier to work on the engine. I'm also doing that on the other boats that I'm doing here. Uh, and then uh, I can start kind of prepping it for paint and I need to get an engine jig in here to see if I can reuse these old steel uh, engine bearers. Uh, if I can't, then we'll get some new ones made, uh, but if we can, then it saves the owner a bit of money and we'll take these out, get them powder coated and put them back in so they look nice. So um, I've got a feeling these might be slightly too short. I don't think they're gonna come quite forward enough, but until I get the engine jig in here, I'm not gonna be able to confirm that. But um, because I don't want to crawl around with the engine jig in a dirty engine bay, I need to get cleaning. done as much as I think I'm going to do today so I have removed the two pieces of sound insulation that I think definitely needed replacing because they were going to look really scruffy once I'd put the new engine in and uh, everything's been cleaned and degreased and washed out to remove any salt grime dirt oil grease and what have you so all I need now is to stick in the um, engine jig and see if those mounts are going to be long enough to use with the new engine or whether we're going to be ripping out and replacing. At the start of this video, I jokingly said that this was about to become the best and biggest Contessa 32 engine swap channel in the world. Um, and I was only slightly joking because I am in yet another Contessa and I'm about to pull the engine out. Now, I'm sure the owner won't mind if I give a quick swing around the main cabin so you can see what she looks like. She's got a nice boat. I'll swap the camera round to forward facing. So here on the starboard side, we have the standard Contessa 32 chart table. Going forward, we have the starboard berth. It's got the berth cushions up at the moment. And on the port side, we have the standard kind of uh, dinette area where the table goes down to make a double berth. And then we have the galley. So this is a 77 boat, I am told. Now, I think it might possibly be a 76 boat that was finished in 77 just because of some little telltales that I've seen around the boat. Um, but she's in pretty nice condition actually, the woodwork's all very nice inside. It's got some slightly unusual features. Normally these lockers have double doors and these have got like a single pull down door which by the looks of it was a factory option because the wood all kind of matches um, the surrounding wood. So I reckon that was done at the factory as a special request. Up forward, again, you have the standard kind of arrangement. This one's got the GRP heads molding around there. I can't get any further because of the life raft. And then up forward, we have a V-berth that is full of cushions. And uh, there's the hanging locker. And there we go, there's the engine. Oh, I've got to be honest, this is the second recording of this particular clip because the sound went all screwy on the first um, effort, which was yesterday. Already started disconnecting some bits on this engine. I've already taken um, throttle cable off, I've taken stop cable off, disconnected the water inlet, um, the raw water strainer and what have you. And um, I just didn't fancy getting into the cockpit locker yesterday in the pouring rain to start disconnecting stuff at the back of the engine. So I'm gonna continue on that now. You might be wondering why I'm showing you so many engine changes. Well, um, it's just the way it goes. I'm showing you the work I'm doing, but actually I'm doing two engine swaps, uh, both from two GMs uh, to Beta 25 engines. And I thought it might be interesting to show you both of them because even on two very, very similar boats, there will be some unique 
differences and uh, challenges along the way, I expect, because that's just the way things go. You'll get two contestors which you think are identical and they'll be ever so slightly different uh, for whatever reason. Um, or there may be some slight differences in what the owner wants with the setup of the new engine, maybe on the charging system or on the batteries or, um, you know, various different options. One's getting a new prop, one isn't. Um, so I thought if we go through both, then uh, you'll get a flavour for what I get up to in my day job when I'm doing engine swaps. Now the fate of this engine is yet to be determined. It's not going back into this particular boat, so it's going into my workshop for the time being while I sort out the engine bay, but um, before it goes into any future boat, it will need a service. Now, one of the service items I can immediately see needs doing is this alternator belt. I don't know why 2GMs are hard on alternator belts, but they do seem to wear them faster than perhaps other engines that I regularly service and look after. And if you look how far down the belt is, in the valley of the pulley there, um, you can see how worn it is. It should be nowhere near as far down the valley as it is. Now, those Mitsubishi belts, um, they are the ones that you can buy from a Yanmar dealer. They're the ones that Yanmar um, supply. I personally think they're not the finest quality belt. The Gates Extra Service belts do seem to last a lot longer. I don't know why that is. I think they're just made out of a better quality rubber maybe. I don't know. But um, if you want your belts on your 2GM to last longer, go and get some Gates Extra Service. Well, the engine is now out, so it's time for me to unfortunately go in. I think I'm going to start by taking out those kind of very rusty metal engine beds. Unbolt those. I need to get the water out, which is a mixture of coolant and goodness knows what else. Uh, I've got the gearbox shaft mount coupling there. I need to take that off. And then there's a whole load of old hoses, cables and all sorts that um, need to come out and then it can be cleaned. Not sure it looks like it but i have made some progress so the steel engine beds that were bolted in there and there managed to get them out with all their rusty nuts um they were pretty pretty nasty although they were very very well fixed they definitely weren't uh, gonna fall off um i've had a bit of a wipe around but you can see how gross it is in there i'm uh, gonna stick the camera right in there's the old stern gland and uh, there's kind of grease and dirty water kind of everywhere up the sides in here. It's not very pleasant. So I'm going to remove some more of these hoses, cables, control cables, bits and pieces, and then climb in there. Unfortunately, I needed to get into these little holes here and here where these bilge pump hoses ran. So I've had to cut them off. So um, I'm going to have to probably replace at least some of that hose, but to some extent, pulling them out of the way is not going to be a bad thing because it's going to allow me much easier access to do all the cleaning and painting and resound insulating I need to do, and then uh, I can put new hoses in afterwards. Now, I have had a bit of a clean up. You can see the tray is looking a lot better, but all around the stern gland is pretty gross. So you can see the kind of big lumps of grease and grot and grime and dirty water and it's just pretty disgusting. So I'm gonna go and have some lunch. And then after lunch, I've got to come in here, remove that and start degreasing everything because it is pretty disgusting. The plan for this stern gland is to remove it for now and measure the stern tube. I think it's the original stern tube in this boat. So I'm hoping I can find a modern dripless stern gland that I can put in uh, to replace this old traditional stuffing box and uh, that will be a much, much cleaner thing to use going forward on this boat. I've had a pretty good go at it. It needs a second go once I have got myself a scrubbing brush, um, but it's looking much, much better already. For cleaning, I've been using 
this stuff so zep heavy duty citrus degreaser so you squirt it on um, and leave it for a while agitate it give it a scrub and then wash it off and it does a pretty good job and you can buy that from tool station if you're in the uk i'm sure there are other very good products around as well the first issue i have unfortunately found is that the bonding around the stern tube back here has detached from the hull so um, if i move the prop shaft you can see the stern tube is moving slightly in relation to the hull which is not ideal um, and i've had a look externally as well and it does look like there is a trickle of water coming out from the boat um, so the void is probably full of water uh, so we're into doing another stern tube replacement job on this boat i've just had that conversation with the owner and he's kind of said yeah i did have my suspicions please just get on with it george so if you see in the project lottie videos where i replace the stern tube there i'm pretty much going to be doing exactly the same again so uh, rudder off prop shaft out stern tube removed with a slide hammer uh, then I will probably take that bulkhead out, get to the top of the skeg, remove all the foam, uh, let it all thoroughly dry, put a new stern tube in, fill it full of foam, glass back over the top, um, and then get back to the business of sorting out this engine bay. So um, it's going to be fun and games. had a pretty good destructive session this afternoon as you've seen the uh, rudder came off the uh, prop shaft came out the stern tube came out and now i've been in the engine bay i've just removed the two aft seacocks i've removed the bulkhead behind the seacocks and i've just opened up the top of the skeg and as predicted it is absolutely soaking wet in there which i knew because when i pulled the um stern tube out water just started running out of the um the void in there so uh, i'll take you inside and show you what it looks like so if you watched the uh lottie project lottie series you'll notice some similarities here it's the same kind of thing again so i've just opened up 
the uh, bonding, there's a piece of plywood and then some bonding over the top of the skeg and inside is just this wet foam. The wood here is semi-rotten um, and so there's only one thing for it. I'm going to have to um, start chopping this out. It has to be said, this foam is somewhat more consolidated than the stuff in Lottie, so I don't know how easily it's going to come out, but um, I imagine my... Uh, oscillating tool with a cutting blade on it will go through it pretty easily and uh, if I can get all of that out then I'm going to call it a day because um, tomorrow is Christmas Eve and uh, I want to get a heater in there and I'll leave the heater in there to help dry out the inside of the skeg whilst I'm eating turkey with my family. Anyway, I shall push on. I think I've done as much as I'm going to do here today and as I often say all these contestants are the same apart from where they're different. I've been excavating the foam at the void and normally that void goes all the way down uh, to below where the stern tube goes but this one when they built the boat they put the stern tube in and they must have poured a lot of resin and stuff over the top of the tube but underneath that there's a load of wet foam, um, so uh, I think I'm going to have to do some chopping out, possibly, of that um, that polyester that is in there. I suspect it is literally just sort of leftover resin. Maybe they chucked a bit of um, glass strands in with it and then poured it in over the top just to use up the resin. So more excavation to come, but it's half past five. I need to tidy up and go and have a shower and uh, call it a day. If you watch the Project Lossy videos, you'll recognise this man here. So uh, it's my mate Robin uh, from Sims Marine Engineering. He is a very talented engineer and machinist, and he has a special jig for boring out stern tubes. So the stern tube, as you know, had been removed, uh, but we needed to enlarge the hole very, very accurately. So we put the new stern tube back in where the old one goes so um, I think I talk about it quite a bit in the other video but um, essentially we're doing a line bore there's a bearing on the inside that you can see there uh, and uh, we run a cutter all the way up the old hole which enlarges it all the way around and uh, and then we can glue the new stern tube in place here you can see the full machinery in action so there's a big electric motor that drives the shaft and uh, the whole contraptions kind of attached to the skeg well clamped on so nothing can move whilst the boring is done. Well I've been having some super fun times here back in the engine bay. I've been removing some more of the bonding that was over the top of the skeg void back there and a bit more of the plywood going slowly further aft because the plywood that was in there was completely rotten removed a bit more foam and I've been looking also at the rudder tube which I'll come on to in just a second but what I have done is remove the material that was over the top as you can see back there I've removed the material that was over the top of the, the rudder tube the rudder tube is obviously as you've seen um, if I've got this in the right order in the edit uh, you'll have seen that we've bored out the hole for the stern tube so it's big enough for the new one to go back in um, the issue I've got is that I am struggling to get tools down into the very bottom of the um, void there which I didn't have struggle with that last time so I don't know if the hull's a little bit thicker in the layup on this boat or not um, but either way there's still a bit of grotty dirty um, horrible um, void down there which will be underneath the new stern tube when it goes in that needs cleaning out and filling ideally with something so um, I think my plan now is to chuck a load of cleaner in there, cleaner degreaser, and then I'm going to go and get a pressure washer and pressure wash it out because that's the only way I can think at the moment to get it clean. Then I can thoroughly dry that and then fill that either with foam or likely with foam, um, put the new stern tube in and then fill the rest up with um, structural foaming epoxy. The other issue that I've discovered and I um, did fear this might be the case is the rudder tube which is the thing you can see back there. Um, it's slowly dripping unfortunately from uh, the 
base of the cockpit into um, the engine bay. Now, initially I thought it was just the nuts and bolts um, that are holding the kind of top flange. There's a metal flange on the top of that um, uh, stainless steel uh, tube. Um, and I hope that I'll be able to take those out and just re-put them back in with some sealant and that would fix the leak. Unfortunately, having done a bit of uh, testing with a very wet sponge and some uh, paper tissue, the water is not only coming in through the fixing holes, it's actually coming in through underneath that um, flange base. So to fix it, I'm gonna to have to take the stern tube, the, the rudder tube out back there, which is bonded in at the bottom and bolted at the top and possibly also bonded to some extent at the top as well. So um, access right at the very back there is really, really tight. Um, it may be deceptive on the camera, but um, I'm sort of having to do everything at arm's length lying on my stomach. So um, I'm going to do a bit more grinding of the bonding around the bottom of that tube and then see if I can get that to move. Um, but it might be another job for the slide hammer to pop that up and then hopefully I can bond it back in exactly the same place. As long as I leave some of the tabbing at the bottom in there, I should be able to slot it back in nice and neatly and then lay up some more glass at the bottom there to glass it in at the bottom and then seal it at the top with a modern polyurethane sealant. So that's the plan. I'm going to have to go and get to it. Well, here's that rudder tube. As you can see, it's pretty rusty around here. And uh, to be perfectly honest with you, once I unbolted it out the top here, it pretty much pulled out. So I don't think there was actually an awful lot of uh, bonding at the bottom here doing anything useful so I think that was a fully justified job to remove that and then I'll reseal it but first I need to get back in there if the camera will focus and kind of clean all that up so that I've got something nice and clean to bond to. I'm about to call it a day because the rain is coming and the rain is going to come in through those two cockpit drains there. Now I did have hoses on to um, direct that out of the boat but actually I don't mind a bit of rainwater now coming in because I've just put a load of kind of uh, degreaser cleaning solution down into the bottom of the void there so the rainwater will hopefully come and kind of rinse that out for me and then I'm going to come in with a pressure washer and give that a really good clean out there probably tomorrow or the day after. Now if I go backwards you can see there's the hole. I've just done a bit of grinding and a bit of prep work around that. That is where the rudder tube will get bonded back into and temporarily I've just taped up the hole in the bottom of the cockpit so that uh, the rain doesn't come in there. Although actually again it probably wouldn't matter too much because it would just kind of rinse everything out. So hopefully tomorrow will be a dry day and I'll be able to carry on giving that a bit more of a clean and uh, I may even get the rudder tube back in if I can find a helper to uh, come and hold nuts and bolts while I do things up. It's been another day in the engine bay but as you can see behind me the rudder tube is back in. I had to do quite a bit of prep and grinding on the hull end of that so the bottom part of it uh, both um, mostly on the inside to be fair a little bit on the outside and a bit of um, clean up in the hole just to make sure I could bond back into it and then um, I've managed to get it back in so um, it's in on a polyurethane sealant at the top and where it goes through the hole in the hull is a polyurethane sealant again in there just like you'd use on a seacock and then I've used a load of thickened epoxy so that's epoxy I've thickened up with uh, a load of glass strands uh, and then silica in there just to um, make it uh, stick nicely without running away. Uh, and I've kind of bogged it in round at the bottom there with that. I will then come back and lay up some glass in there, but I might wait until I've glassed up the top of the um, skeg void because uh, then I can do all the glassing kind of at the same time. It'd be slightly easier to do it that way. So, um, I'm quite looking forward to having this done, to be perfectly honest with you. Working in an engine bay is not uh, very comfortable, as you can probably imagine. Before I was doing the um, 
rudder tube i was cleaning in here mostly i put a load of cleaning uh chemicals down uh in the bottom of the void back there so um sort of engine degreaser and um, general cleaner and then i also had a bit more of a scrub around here today because there's a few blobs of grease still kicking around and um then with my pressure washer the whole engine bay got pressure washed um which sent a bit of spray kind of around the boat but um most of it ends up in the bilge or going out the um going out the stern tube so um it's all pretty clean in here now which is nice and um i just need the voids to be completely dry now and hopefully with the dehumidifier on overnight um tomorrow i'll be able to put the stern tube back into the boat it's a dry day today and a dry day tomorrow and i want to get that stern tube bonded in but also once i've got that stern tube bonded in it does mean it's going to be very difficult for me to work at the back here so i'm going to do as much prep as I possibly can. So I'm gonna do a whole bunch of sanding at the back here on the surfaces, which are gonna get recoated. Um, and um, obviously there's gonna be some glass going over those as well when I bond over the top of the skeg void. Um, there's a chance that the new cockpit drains up there uh, will arrive today if I'm lucky and I'll get those in. And then later on today, I will get that stern tube in. And that means basically I can't work at the back of the boat because I don't want to dislodge it once I've got it absolutely located where it needs to be. Um, I'm also going to, if you look down here, that is one of the locations for the cockpit drain seacocks. And the surface here is not particularly smooth and flat. So, um, there was an awful lot of sealant under there to um, get the thing to seal when it was originally fitted. So what I'm thinking of doing is um, just building up that surface with a flat area so that the seacock has something completely flat to go down onto as well. Because um, it just, um, it feels like that would make a better job of it rather than just using tons of sealant again to um, fill all the gaps between the flange of the Blake seacock and the hull. So um, that is what's going to happen next. Here's the engine bay now. I'm afraid my plan to record in here whilst I was prepping all the surfaces was not very successful because getting a camera in and not knocking it whilst you're working is not very easy. Um, but uh, all the sides and the bottom have all been kind of sanded. I've ground back over the top here a little bit more because I need to lay up some glass in there and you can't lay up glass on top of the old flow coat so um, hopefully I've done enough there um, and a bit round kind of where the seacocks go and uh, I also had put some kind of filler in here where there was some old damage I've got to do a little bit more sanding there but um, I've kind of done what I can with the sander I need to do a little bit of hand sanding just kind of in the corners just to knock that down make it look nice so that, that can be painted and beautified. So I've just taken delivery of new cockpit drains. So um, this is the bit that goes through the uh, deck uh, and then there's a 45 degree elbow which will screw on there and then we have a hose tail which will screw on there. So what I normally do on these is I will dry fit everything and then we'll work out how much of this uh, thread I can remove so that the elbow and the hose tail are as high as possible. The reason I do that is to get a better fall of the hose down to the seacock but it also gives me more space to work in the engine bay once these are fitted um, and I suppose it also removes a bit of weight out of the boat which is um, which is always good if you have an eye on keeping your boat light to go racing which um, I don't think this owner is um, but there's no harm in doing that anyway just to have uh, as uh, good a fit as possible. Now, if you are watching that keenly, you will notice that I have nicked the gel coat annoyingly just around this a little bit. So um, that's slightly annoying, but never mind. I have got some gel coat I can chuck in there, which is a very close color match. So I will uh, run out and do that. But these are unusually large 
flanges for a Contessa. They must have had a different supplier at the time of building this boat for the um, cockpit drains, because they were definitely original. Um, but uh, those little nicks will barely be noticeable once that's in, but I want to fill them anyway, just because um, I don't want any water getting into the laminate underneath. As you can see behind me, I've managed to put in the lid that goes over the top of the skeg. So that's that piece of plywood. Um, it's just roughly cut to size and then chucked in on thickened epoxy. Underneath there, you've got the void, which then needs to be filled with foam. So what I have actually decided to do, I've changed my mind. I was planning to put a foaming epoxy in there because it's a structural foaming epoxy that will help hold the stern tube. But instead of that, I have mixed up some resin, which I've thickened and added some chopped glass uh, strands to and poured that in over the top of the stern tube so it is bonded in much like the original tube was bonded in on this boat so it doesn't really need that structural foaming epoxy so to save time save a bit of cost I'm going to use a polyurethane foam in there tomorrow uh, once this has all kind of gone off um, I can then prep it and put some glass over the top of the um, skeg and then it's pretty much done. I've also, at the same time as putting glass over the top of the skeg, I need to put some glass up around that rudder tube that's right at the back there, because um, it's just easier to do that whole lot of glassing all at the same time. So um, I have tried to do some videoing of me doing the work in progress, but unfortunately my ability to film in here is very, very limited. And at one stage, you basically, I had a look at the footage, basically just a footage of my arse wiggling around in the engine bay, because I just can't get the camera to clip on anywhere sensible to get a good view of what I am doing. So apologies, uh, but ultimately I'm trying to do a job of work for my customer um, and not just make YouTube videos, which uh, I know a lot of other people do. So um, progress has been good and will continue tomorrow. As you can see, there's the stern tube down there as well. I've used up a little bit of leftover thickened epoxy just to help 
bog that in down there as well. Um, it's not super pretty because there's different colours of uh, filler and uh, uh, stuff in there just holding it in place, but um, it's going to do its job. Uh, that will also get a bit of glass over the top of there. If you saw Project Lottie, uh, when I put the stern tube on there, it's going to be a very, very similar kind of thing just to help um, support the stern tube. Stern tube's slightly oversized at the moment. It'll probably get chopped back at some point, but um, I just want to get everything bonded in uh, and then I can start looking at the engine uh, alignment where the engine beds need to be and whether I need to chop down that stern tube anymore. I suspect I will. I'm just doing a polyurethane pour into the skeg void so um, it comes in kind of two containers put equal amounts into um, a pot give it a quick stir and I really do mean quick and then pour it in the hole because you've got about 25 to 30 seconds before the stuff starts foaming and it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger so um, you need to pour it in the hole pretty rapidly after consolidating it all with a with a quick mixing stick I am doing it in uh, small pours so I've done two uh, 200 mil uh, pours so far and I'm nearly at the top of the void I've just gone away to give it a little bit of time to um, rise, if you like, like rising bread. Uh, and uh, I think I need one more uh, 200 mil pour in there. It might not even need quite that much, but um, I'll chuck 200 mils in. And then if it comes out the top, I've got holes there so it can come out the top and I can clean it up afterwards um, if it's uh, if it is a slightly too much. So I'm going to uh, stick some in the pot here, give it a mix and chuck it in the hole. So uh, we'll start with uh, part one. And there is just a smidge over a hundred mils. That's about 110, so I'm going to put this up to 220. And that's 210, that's 220. All right, quick stir. See, it's already starting to do stuff and scrape around the edges you can tell when it's kind of all fully consolidated because it looks stringy initially as the two components haven't quite mixed and then it increasingly sort of turns all into the same color Right, I think that is fully consolidated all together into one mixture. It is starting to foam. Whilst that is curing, which doesn't take very long with this stuff, I am going to go off and cut some glass.
there we go that's all the bonding done so the area over the top of the skeg there has had four layers of glass and it has got a layer of peel ply over the top of it at the moment that's what the stripy stuff is I've uh, glassed up around the rudder tube back there that doesn't have peel ploy on it just because um, I kind of forgot and now I can't reach it, um, but that's fine, it'll be okay. Um, further back here, I've put a bit of glass around the stern tube so that's all properly bonded in. It may or may not get some more, I'll have a look once it's all cured. And then back here, because the hull was not particularly flat, I have put two little discs of, um, I think it's epoxy, uh, that's been pre-laid up. So I just cut two little discs out and bonded them onto the hull so that when the Blake Seacocks go back in, they have a nice flat surface to kind of do up to. Previously, there was an awful lot of sealant under those Seacocks just to fill the gaps and I wasn't very happy with that. I've used epoxy for all of the glasswork and the bonding behind me and I'll explain why quickly. I could have used polyester for some or potentially all of it but I used epoxy because the uh, rudder tube right at the back there, the stainless steel rudder tube, I wanted to bond to that and I wanted a really good bond and epoxy is going to bond better to the stainless steel than polyester would uh, in my experience. Secondly, the stern tube that's down here, that is an epoxy stern tube, so it needs to be bonded in either with epoxy or vinyl ester and I don't have vinyl ester because it doesn't have a very long shelf life um, so I used epoxy for that and because I'm using epoxy at the back and epoxy at the front it kind of makes sense to do the whole thing with epoxy rather than having that mix of epoxy and polyester. Yes epoxy does cost a little bit more uh, but in the grand scheme of things and doing a decent job um, it makes sense to do the whole thing all in one go and it was the same actually with these little discs that I've put in so those little discs that I've bonded onto the hull down there for the sea Again, I'm pretty sure, I can't remember 100%, but I'm pretty sure that they were um, cut out of a sheet of uh, epoxy glass layup. Uh, and so again, they needed to be bonded in either with vinyl ester or epoxy. So I've used epoxy again for the whole lot. And that's why I've chosen to do it the way I have. Around in the workshop and I have here the bulkhead that goes in the back of the engine bay. So this kind of separates the engine bay itself from the area behind the engine bay where the um, uh, cockpit um, drains are and um, the rudder tube and all that sort of stuff. I was hoping to reuse it, but it's not in particularly great condition. It's, um, I started removing the, the old secondary bonding, the, the tabbing that held it in place, and the wood is just kind of starting to fall apart on me, to be honest with you. Um, for some reason, when they built the boat, they made this kind of massive slot and then cut a section out and I just think it's a bit rubbish. So I have just looked out, fortunately in my wood pile, I have some decent plywood left over from another job. So um, this is gonna be hopefully just about big enough that I can stick the old one on top and then draw around it and cut it out. And then uh, hopefully that will be a reasonably good fit. I've already tried this one. It's actually slightly oversized because of the additional bonding that I did in the engine bay yesterday. So if I cut it the same size, I can always trim it when I get back to the boat. And there we go, that will hopefully be a reasonable fit back on the boat. So I'm gonna grab some other stuff and head back there, see how it looks. There's that bulkhead loosely in place. It's taken a little bit of trimming, particularly around the top, just to get it to fit reasonably well. I'm not too worried about the gaps because um, it's gonna get um, glassed in all around and I can fill all those gaps with thickened epoxy. So that is all ready to go once the back bit of the engine bay has uh, been finished. And by finish, what I mean is I need to remove that peel ply, I need to do a little bit more sanding and prep, then I want to flow coat the areas that I won't be able to access once that bulkhead is back in. So I think I'm going to get on with a little bit of sanding and then a little bit of cleaning.
Well, that looks miles better, having been flow coated all around the back there. I've basically done all the areas that I won't be able to reach very easily once I have put this bulkhead back in. So I'm going to let that cure. And uh, next job is chuck the bulkhead in, glass that in place, and I can finish the flow coating at the back there and uh, carry on in the engine bay. There is the bulkhead back in place. I have pre-cut the limber holes this time. I learned that from the last one I did. It's much easier to put them in before you put the bulkhead in because then you can get them exactly when you want them. It's just got a couple of screws in it at the moment to hold it and then I've kind of done a, a radius of thickened epoxy all the way around and then I am going to lay some glass up on that shortly. Getting the bulkhead in and working on this side of the bulkhead is fairly straightforward. It's a bit uncomfortable in the engine bay, but it's not too bad. Access to the other side of that bulkhead now is extremely tight. There's a small letterbox size opening and uh, I'm just tossing up whether I actually want to attempt to glass this bulkhead in on the opposite side or whether it'd be okay to just do it on this side. I think I will try and get some glass in on the other side. It seems like the right thing to do. Um, that um, it is not going to be an easy task. However, I have spent a lot more time in this engine bay getting everything sorted than I had planned for this particular video. So I'm going to bring this video to a close here. I had hoped to kind of get engine beds and everything done in this video, but just time has not allowed and I want to get a video out that isn't ridiculously long. It's already going to be slightly longer than I had anticipated. I'd just like to quickly thank all those people that have sent me a donation to the refit and sale uh, beer and new camera fund. It is really, really appreciated. If you want to do that it helps support the show it will hopefully allow me to buy some better lighting and recording and audio equipment in due course there is a paypal link down in the description and you can send me five pounds ten dollars fifteen yen twenty euros whatever it is that you feel appropriate if you've enjoyed my videos then it's a nice way to thank me for putting the time in and making them and i really really do appreciate those that have put their hand in their pocket it's uh, very much a big thank you to you and uh, why I continue making these videos. I will see you on the next one when I will hopefully have this bulkhead glassed in and I can actually start sorting out some engine beds and uh, get two engines into this boat and the other boat. Speak to you next time. Cheers for now. Bye.